All right, let's pick up where we left off and talk for a few minutes about DNA in particular. Phosphate group, deoxyribose, uh, sugar, and a nitrogenous base. What are the nitrogenous bases? They are right down here, and I would suggest using an acronym at the golf course to help you out. Maybe that's you'd even rather be at the golf course than doing this lesson. I can't really imagine that, but maybe so. And so, at the golf course, um, and now, of course, no points the next test for at the golf or course. A is for adenine, uh, T is for thymine, G for guanine, C is for cytosine. So how many DNA nucleotides are there? Well, with four bases, there are four DNA nucleotides. Phosphate, sugar A, phosphate, sugar T, phosphate, sugar G, phosphate, sugar C. So how are they hooked together? Well, we see they're hooked together to form kind of a twisted ladder. But let's uh, work our way into that. Who figured out how they're uh, hooked together? Well, here's a picture of two guys from your textbook. And boy, are they happy. Why are they happy? Because they have figured out the structure of DNA. There's a Tinker Toy model behind them, a ball and stick type model, uh, showing how a DNA molecule is put together. Who are these incredibly happy guys? Well, there's James Watson on the left and Francis Crick on the right, and they received a Nobel Prize about 10 years later for this discovery. And uh, looking around your, uh, th this page in your book, what year was this picture taken? Ooh, a long, long time ago, right? Way back when? 1953. Oh my goodness, 1953? Oh, I bet there's some of you in this class that weren't even born then. Oh my goodness. Well, hey, I was. Let's see, how old was I in 1953? Hmm, I think I was seven years old. And so, um, you know, since that seems so long ago to most of you, let's put this in historical context. Uh, let me ask you this question. When this picture was made, did most homes have TV sets or not? Did any homes have TV sets? And the answer is, what? Well, some did, some didn't. Uh, so it happened my home did not in 1953. Uh, uh, my home didn't get a, a TV set until three years later, 1956. I was 10 years old. And I had tremendous developmental deficiencies because I didn't get to watch TV the first 10 years of my life. Isn't that terrible? I was forced to go outside and play and ride my bike and ice skate and swim and hike and, and play with my friends and things like that. Oh. What a terrible way for a child to grow up. Anyway, uh, I actually did watch a TV show about one, my first TV show, about one year before this picture was made. It was at my grandfather's house. Here it is. I revisited this home last summer, summer of 2011, for the first time in, uh, oh, I think uh, 35, 40 years. Of course, my grandparents aren't there anymore, but somebody's kept the home up beautifully. And this is the home where I watched my very first TV show, right inside the living room, which is right inside this left window here. I watched my first TV show in the summer of 1952. I even remember what it was. It was, wow, a real spellbinder for a six-year-old. It was the 1952 Democratic National Convention. I even remember who's duking it out for the Democratic nomination. It was Adelaide Stevenson and uh, Estes Kefauver. Now, did we elect a President Stevenson or Keefe Offer uh, back in 1952? Hmm, but that doesn't sound too familiar. No, we did not. Stevenson got the nomination and lost in 52, and again in 56 to the very same person who did become President back in 1952 and 56. Well, it was a famous World War II general, Commander Allied Forces Europe. Yes, none other than Dwight D. Eisenhower. So, <clears throat> when I went back to this home last summer, I looked all over the place. There's that, my pointer going all over, but actually I looked along the road, uh, which is not too far to my left when I took this picture, and I was looking for what? I was looking for the historical marker. You say, what historical marker? Well, I, I figured there'd be a historical marker outside that would say, home where Ed Vesey watched his first TV show in the summer of 1952. But it wasn't there. Well, maybe next time when I go back there in a year or three, I think I'm going to go back up there. Maybe it'll be there then. Oh, well. Anyway, 
Uh, well, I was watching uh, TV uh, inside the living room on my very first TV show. Watson and Crick were figuring out something that made them famous forever in the annals of science. What is that? That is how a DNA molecule is put together. And what did they figure out? They actually figured out the DNA, a DNA molecule is put together like a ladder. And so we have kind of a ladder-like thing here. Here's like the sides of the ladder. What are the sides of the ladder? Well, they're alternating uh, phosphate sugar groups. Phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar. Same thing on the other side. And what forms the rungs of the ladder, so to speak? Well, it's the nitrogenous bases. A's joined to T's and G's joined to C's. This is another reason that this at the golf course acronym may help you out. Uh, because Watson and Crick discovered that A's are always joined to T's and G's are always joined to C's. They also discovered that the nucleotides are oriented in the opposite direction. So here we have a phosphate sugar G coming in this way and over here we have the phosphate sugar C coming in from the opposite direction. And finally they discovered that the ladder is not a straight up and down ladder, it is a twisted ladder like two intertwined slinkies. And uh, you know the two sides of the ladder each form a helix and so the technical term for the shape of the DNA ladder is double helix. And so what does DNA stand for? Uh, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. I'll write that down on the, on the board when we do our dry erase recap. And so here's a computer generated model, model, model of DNA and and uh, what do we have here? Oh my goodness, I think that's a cell. Yes it is. A couple cells, a couple of human cells. And uh, those will help us answer the last question in this little DNA section uh, in your study uh, questions down below. And uh, the question is, what is the total length of DNA molecules in every human cell nucleus? And so as you look at this picture, we see this dark area here. That dark area, these are two different cells. That is the nucleus of the cell, as most of you know. Here's a cell all by itself. Uh, and this is a human cell. Uh, it's a human cheek cell. And uh, here is a, uh, the nucleus of that human cheek cell. The question again is, what is the total length of DNA molecules in every human cell nucleus? And the answer is a whopping six feet. You say, uh, Professor, how can s you mean six feet? Wait a minute, Professor. You mean all our nuclei added together, the DNA adds up to six feet. No. Just one cell, one nucleus. The DNA in that nucleus, the total length of DNA in that nucleus is six feet. And you might ask, well, gee, how can six feet of anything fit inside that little bitty nucleus? Well, it's a uh, <clears throat> DNA molecule is a very thin molecule. It's wound up in a very organized fashion. We'll talk about that later. And uh, so, but that's it, six feet. Now, finally, uh, briefly on RNA. RNA nucleotides are a little bit different. Of course, they have a phosphate group. They have ribose sugar, and they have almost the same bases. They have four but they have uracil instead of thymine. So the DNA, we go, we are at the golf course. With RNA, we are specifically at the university golf course. At the university golf course. So how are RNA nucleotides hooked together? Well, like a half ladder. Like a half ladder. Over here, we've got a, a uh, full ladder. A, uh, <clears throat> and over here, we have a half ladder. Uh, one slightly misleading aspect of this uh, diagram is you might get the impression that DNA is a double helix, which would be correct, and you might think that RNA is a half, uh, a single helix. It is not. It takes various forms that we'll talk about later, but it is like a half ladder. So, with that, let's go to the uh, let's go to the dry erase board recap of what we have just discussed.